So, how would you like for your internet provider to know and keep track of every site you visit on the web? And not only that, but sell that information to target you for online ads. You know, companies have been barred from doing that, but now lawmakers are sending the president legislation that blocks those online privacy regulations, opening the internet service providers to get your browsing history. Well, supporters say the internet regulations need to be lifted and are too restrictive, but opponents slam this, calling it an invasion of our privacy. Brian Claypool is a defense attorney and former prosecutor. Philip Hollowell, founder of the Hollowell Law Group, a former prosecutor and police officer, was a judge advocate general for the U.S. Navy. Brian and Philip, uh, uh, welcome. Brian, let me start with you. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? And what does it mean to us when we're on the web? Well, Eric, first of all, I'm, I'm a President Trump supporter, but I bleed civil rights. I've been a civil rights attorney for over 12 years now. And I will tell you that this law strips the average consumer of privacy rights guaranteed under the state and federal constitution. And not only does it do that, Eric, but we have to look at the implications of this law as it relates to the civil court system and the criminal court system. And let me give you two quick examples. In a civil court, let's say you've got a custody battle going on or a family law matter going on, and the wife sends a subpoena over to AT&T or Verizon and says, hey, give me the browsing history of my husband. Well, guess what? He's not going to be able to fight that anymore because he's, his privacy rights are gutted. Similarly, in the criminal system, Eric, let's say a woman's been missing for a week and the husband is a suspect, but there's no real evidence on him yet. The prosecutor can usurp or bypass getting a search warrant and simply send a subpoena now over to AT&T or Verizon and say, hey, let me get this young man's browsing history. And lo and behold, if there's something on that browser that says, oh, I'm researching how to, how to clean up a crime scene, then that guy's toast. I mean, this will be chaos in the court systems, and this will be the wild, wild west in a courtroom. Well, what, what about the broader issue? I mean, Philip, uh, the supporters say, look, there are too many regulations on the internet now. This opens up the, the providers just to use this information to target us for ads, and it'll help you know, bolster their profits and this sort of thing. Well, Eric, you know, here's the problem. Um, when you go to some place like Facebook or you go to Google, you're giving them that information voluntarily. But when you have only one, maybe two internet service providers to choose from, like is the case where I live, then every single thing that you do is the property then of the internet service provider and they can take it and then sell it to God knows who to do who knows what with. Um, when we have a limited marketplace, like we do in terms of internet service providers, reasonable regulations are necessary. I'm generally a, a person who says, let's get away with unnecessary government regulations. I like deregulating things, but there are times when you have companies like these uh, large internet service providers that have so much market power, reasonable regulations are necessary. I'm really surprised that Congress has done this. I wish yeah. the president had indicated he would not sign the bill, but unfortunately, I believe he will. Well, well Philip, why would then, you know, Congress do this? I mean, they get, they'll, they'll know about our apps. They'll know about the sites we visit. They'll know about our location. They even say you can get our social security numbers and get right through our browsing history, you know, for these commercial purposes, Philip. Why they would do it, I have no idea, Eric, because it, it doesn't make sense. I, I think conservatives, I think liberals, I think people in the middle, I think the average person on the street doesn't even know really that this legislation has passed or that the president is going to sign it. And I think that once uh, the public learns what has happened, I, I suspect there's going to be quite a bit of outrage from across the entire spectrum of society. And what about that, Brian? I mean, you know, the supporters say, yeah. you know, it's just a business thing, but, you know, you want your browsing history to be out there? And sold. I mean, well, not that you're doing anything wrong, but yeah, well, I, I just joined Bumble, so maybe that isn't a good idea for me. But 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 anyway, look. look the, the the bottom line here is that the 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 Congress and President Trump have said that this promotes innovation, Eric. That's the reason behind this. I don't see a nexus behind this bill of gutting privacy rights on the internet and innovation. Second. I've already had my law firm website hacked twice in the last six months. Can you imagine in the future how easy it is going to be for hackers now with your information being sold to folks we don't even know about 
This is going to create chaos in terms of the average citizen. For example, identity theft too, Eric. Isn't this going to promote and facilitate, for example, identity theft? Then you get into issues of how do you even enforce this? I mean, how do you as a consumer know what to do if your privacy it, rights are violated? I'm, Who I'm, do you sue? Do you, you sue don't. AT&T and then they have immunity? Uh, I mean, you don't. Right now you assume or think there's some level yeah. of privacy, but apparently this will strip that away. Uh, all right, we'll see. And let our viewers decide and, and react to their members of Congress and elsewhere uh, as they, this continues. Brian and Philip, uh, thank you. We will keep track of this. Well, thank you.